Welcome to the third map in this game with exclusively faceless enemies. Exactly like chapter 20, faceless are scattered all across the map that infinitely respawn from dragon veins and pools of acid tiles. Each group of faceless has a different skill that you have to worry about, such as Aegis, Swordbreaker, Shuriken Breaker, and similar skills. However, that doesn't stop this from being one of the easiest maps in this entire playthrough so far. What I could do with this map is be boring and wait out the infinite reinforcements to grind all of my units to level 20, but instead of that, I'm going to try my best to activate all of the Dragon Veins as quickly as I possibly can, mainly because that's way more fun. Before we start doing that though, it's finally time to reclass Sophie into a Master Ninja. Very conveniently, she's able to keep her sword rank in this class, so she's able to still use strong weapons if she needs to. This map is particularly favorable for the Spirit Katana, making it a great way for her to grind experience in the new class. As a small training project, I'm going to spend a good chunk of this map training Kaze's sword rank and Shigure's axe rank. This first group of enemies makes it particularly easy to begin working on those tasks thanks to how they're spread out, allowing me to create a single file line of units. Notably, the spot that Kaze goes to in order to kill the faceless that Midori weakened is three tiles away from two other faceless, allowing other units to use his dual strike to attack the faceless at two range. This allows Kaze to get 4 weapon experience immediately on the first turn, which is massive for a unit like Kaze who kinda struggles to stay in the front lines on a map with a lot of physical enemies. Shigure also importantly just got Rally Defense. This is probably the most important rally that we have now given how frail the birthrate cast is and especially given the fact that I can't use the guard gauge to ever block attacks, or even use pair up bonuses to give my units more survivability. This will be especially useful on this map, since every single enemy here targets a unit's physical bulk. We got this handled. This last faceless can be left alive. He'll kill himself into a sugi on enemy phase. Kelzori moves a bit further to let Azura sing to her for some more experience, and then Kelzori flies north to activate the first dragon vein. Hinoka carries Kor into the far west side of the map, since there's dragon veins that are pretty out of the way for units with lower movement to go grab. Hayato heads north with Ryoma to help him reach the very top of the map in order to activate one dragon vein. Takami would have been faster for this job instead of Ryoma, but for the purposes of this clear, it makes zero difference. Impressively, this enemy phase has absolutely no random enemy movement. I tested it like three or four times and I got the same outcome every single one. Mitama once again helps Shigure build some axe rank by weakening this faceless for him to kill. My heart is singing. Midori is able to build more of his axe rank by chipping the faceless from the other side of the grave. And finally, Kaze is able to kill the Faceless to gain some more experience for himself. Hmm. Sakura is now free to use the second Dragon Bane. Kaldori drops Sophie one tile to the left, putting her in range of three faceless nearby. I'm here to help. This is dangerous for Sophie, so Shiro pairs up with Asugi to get himself dropped two spaces away from her to apply Jontium. Even still, Sophie can't survive all three hits from the faceless. 
This will be her first real attempt at soul tanking, which may be a rare occurrence given how unreliable it is. Here it's not so bad, because she also has high avoid rates, and is very unlikely to actually die given all the factors involved. Azura sings to Mitama to apply Rally Luck to Korin, who similarly wants increased avoid rates as he'll spend this turn fighting his own group of Faceless. Ryoma pairs up with Hayato to immediately use the Dragon Vein up there. Sophie goes in range of the leftmost Faceless. Here, Shiro would heal her if it was needed, but Sophie managed to proc Soul and got the rest of her healing from the Spirit Katana. Shigure flies north to apply Rally Defense to Sophie. Azura then sings to Shigure in order to get him into dual striking position with Kaldori, since they haven't been able to work together at all on this map yet. Mitama helps Hanoka take out the Faceless, and the remainder of my units down here will hang back and not go in range of any of the other Faceless. Partly because if Korn had been more damaged, he could face a chance of death, and mostly because I just want my non Korn units to get some kills too. Sakura can immediately help Kaze build some more sword rank, allowing him to get C in swords. This will be a huge boon to him on the next time he gets deployed, since C rank allows him to also use the Spirit Katana. Mitama and Hinoka clean up two of the Faceless. As it should be. I will 
be your support. Korin goes above Hinoka to ensure that both Faceless attack Mitama. Since she's too range locked, the Faceless will survive and allow Kaze and Sakura to gain a little bit more experience. Midori gets into dual striking position for Shiro, who can also go adjacent to Asugi to build both of their supports up at once. Kaldori moves one tile above Midori in order to dual strike for Shigure. Azura pairs up with Sophie in order to reach Shigure and sing to him. Now that there's no more Faceless nearby, he's just gonna go around procking the dragon veins that are super out of the way. I've got your back. Likewise, Hinoka flies slightly to the left before weakening this faceless so she can use the Dragon Vein on the next turn. Looks like we have no choice. Since there's nothing else left to do, I go ahead and proc all the dragon veins now. That's all the Dragon Veins activated and the enemies fully routed in just 6 turns. Now there's only the Requestion of Rajat left. There's actually two ways to recruit her. The first is to defeat her as a red unit, and the second is to talk to her with Hayato and recruit her on the map. I'm going to express my Kaze favoritism by defeating her with him for minimal gain, while also waiting an extra turn to get that final proc of proc with Hero. Show me what you've got. Who's scared? Not me. I'm with you. 